Katrina McNeil, manager of the Lake Country Art Gallery and Art House, speaks briefly about her experiences in the arts from childhood to present. She reflects on her move to Lake Country from London and its effects on her own art making practices. A printmaker with extensive experience in the photographic arts, she is inspired by the Okanagan landscape and continues to explore it with her astute artistic eye. An integral member of the gallery in its formative years, Petrina elaborates on her goals for the gallery as well as her aspirations regarding the expansion of the arts community in Lake Country. My early years I grew up in London and um, I grew up in a house that was full of creativity. My, my dad was a photographer so um, even from a young age I would help um, in the processes of photography. Our house was full of the smell of chemicals um, we had a big rotary glazer set up in a cupboard. Um, the rotary glazer um, was something that I could help with. I could stand there and pull the wet prints out of the um, trays, smooth them out onto the fabric band, and they would go round this big steel drum and come out shiny and crispy and dry the other end. <laughs> um, and I think that certainly um, allow me to have a familiarity with, with equipment and, and machinery that there's, there's something really comforting and nice about using a printing press and I think it comes from that experience that I had as a child um, glazing prints for my dad. <laughs> I grew up never feeling like I wanted to stay in England. I always knew I wanted to be somewhere else but I didn't quite know where. Um, and I had an opportunity to come here in 2005. Um, my stepmom actually moved here 13 years ago and I came to visit her. And the moment my husband and I arrived here, we both felt the same way. It was like we'd come home. Um, and yeah, that was the place, which was kind of unusual because the place I was imagined, I thought it was somewhere in the Mediterranean. In my head, I always saw the mountains and the water and the fruit growing on the hills. <laughs> um, and, uh, but I'm not very good at languages, so I always figured how can I live somewhere in the Mediterranean and struggle with that language barrier, and of course I came here, it had all those visual elements, all the things that felt right, and everyone speaks English, so I was very happy. Uh, when I moved here, the first thing I did was seek out the artistic community. Um, I heard that the gallery had just opened here literally months before I moved here, um, so I made a beeline down here. <laughs> and uh, volunteered, signed up for volunteering. It just happened that a year later, a position came up at the gallery, which I applied. So I had a, a, this grand plan in my head that I would love to open up an art center, you know, with workshops and maybe a gallery and a coffee shop. Well, I came here and I got the job in the gallery and the coffee shops next door. The only thing we hadn't got was this room here, this building. Um, but gradually over time, you know, we've built up the amount of workshops we were doing. Um, it was clear we needed more space. This space became available and bingo, now we've got workshops too. So kind of the vision I had is sort of coming together, but some of it was already there. Well, as I say, um, printmaking is um, something that I felt immediately very comfortable with. And it may be going back to sort of my childhood experiences, both using the rotary glazer, but also um, as a photographer, my dad had, um, he would do like proof runs and um, multiple print runs which he would stamp his name onto the back of every print and lay them out all over the living room floor till the ink dried so you I, I grew up in this house that was full of multiple images laying out to dry <laughs> um, and that that whole thing about printing where you can take an image and you can slightly alter it and you can compare it and you can put it next to another one that's similar but different um, and that whole editing process. Editing is a big part of printmaking. Um, so there's a lot of similar processes and ideas and water is a huge attraction to me. It's the subject of a lot of my work, either directly or indirectly. So this is just the perfect place, the light and the water and um, the sky is so big here as well. Uh, you know, when you've grown up in cities where the sky is limited by the buildings, um, and you only ever see that much of it and to come here and you just see so much. I guess there's someone who lives in Saskatchewan this doesn't seem like a lot of sky because <laughs> it's always framed by the hills and the mountains um, but to me it's huge, it's wonderful and the reflection of that in the water in these huge bodies of water is just endlessly
That's, that's the thing about being an artist is that you're always your own worst critic. Like you, you look at what you do, you learn from it, and you want to do something better or different next time. So by the time you've moved on to the next thing, the thing you've just done is never good enough. But interestingly, if you open that time frame up and you look back five years or ten years, and you think, did I really do that? Oh my goodness, I can see so much more in it now than I could then. So that's an interesting aspect, I think, of being an artist. I have a very personal view of art, and, and it, it is that everybody has a right to have that personal view about art. Um, one of the things I try and encourage in the gallery is that everybody that comes in has a right to have an opinion about that art there, whether they like it or don't like it, um, and that they shouldn't be put off by maybe not having an academic background, not knowing enough about the work. Yes, find out more about those, but it doesn't mean that your opinion, your first impression, mm -hmm. kind of a couple of scores of thought on this, you know, that you might think, well, is there a saturation point if you have too many artists? How's, how's that going to work? How can they all survive? Um, but I think it actually helps to have a strong community. I don't think artists work well on their own. I think you need that community, you need the support, you need the inspiration, you need to be able to share those experiences. Um, and it certainly works well here. It's like having a critical mass, if you like.